In the last video, we saw a reality where the currency between, or the exchange rate between the yuan and the dollar started off at 10 to 1. And at that exchange rate, at that exchange rate, China was shipping more goods in terms of whether you measured it in dollars or yuan, was shipping more to the US than the US was shipping to China. And because of that, we saw an imbalance in the currencies. The yuan became more expensive, or the dollar became cheaper, until eventually Chinese goods got expensive enough that there was less demand in the US, and US goods got cheap enough that there was more demand in China that the trade actually came into balance. Now, what? that's OK if everyone wants, wanted to have balanced trade. But what if the Chinese government didn't want that? They said, hey, we need to develop. The United States is already developed. We want to have an industrial base. We want to have a market to sell our goods to. We want to export more to the United States than we import from them. We want export-led growth. So they don't like the dynamic that they saw. They didn't like the currency. They did not like the yuan getting expensive. So let's say the Chinese government. Let me scroll up a little bit. So the Chinese, the Chinese government, government wants wants to keep currency currency exchange exchange pegged 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 at I ran out of space over there. They want to keep currency exchange pegged at 10 won per dollar. And they want that because they want this situation to keep on going forever. That China keeps shipping more to the US than the US ships to China. Or maybe they'll even they even want it to go even more. That China keeps shipping more and more to the US than the US ships to China so that China could build its industrial base. And I guess a more sinister view is also so that the United States is industrial base gets depleted, that they keep manufacturing things cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and then United States manufacturers can't compete. And we'll talk about this in more videos. It's not, it's not, um, it's it's actually not clear that it's 100% one-sided, that there's actually some benefits that the United States also gets from this. And we'll, we'll discuss that more. It's a little bit more involved. So how could they do this? Let's just say that the Chinese government wants this reality, and they want this reality frozen. They do not want the reality where the trade balances. How could they intervene in currency markets so that this doesn't change. Because as we said, if more Chinese goods are being bought, there is more demand for yuan. The yuan should appreciate. The dollar should go down. But how do you get both? How do you have your cake and eat it too? How do you get uh, more goods being shipped to the United States than back to China without the yuan appreciating? And the way you do that, they're the Chinese government. Or maybe in particular, we could talk about the Chinese central bank. The Chinese central bank, which is a part of the Chinese government, can say, hey, to keep our yuan devalued, we will print money. So let me draw the Chinese central bank. So the central bank of China. So what the central bank of China, let me intervene over here. The central bank of China, so let me do this in a new color. So right over here, we have the Chinese the chinese central central the chinese central bank and what they do they can actually just print money so we had this scenario that i had outlined in the last two videos where we had this imbalance there was demand for 1000 won but only supply of 500 won so what they can do is just equalize this they could just print they could just print 500 won so they literally could just print 500 won, 500 won, and then try to convert that into dollars. And then try, or they will, convert that into dollars. Convert it into dollars. So what just happened? Now all of a sudden, we have $100 that are trying to be converted into roughly 1,000 wands, or if that exchange rate were to be constant. So there's demand for 1,000 wands. Before the Chinese central bank got involved, there was only a 500 won supply. But now the Chinese central bank says, OK, there's a demand for 1,000 won. There's only 500 won supply. We're going to produce another 500 won. We literally can just print it, and then they will convert what they printed into dollars. So just like that, you now have a, a balance of supply and demand. 
you have 1,000 won, 500 here and 500 here that want to be converted into dollars. And then you have $100 that want to be converted into, I guess, 1,000 won. So if they were to do this, the currency wouldn't change. The supply and the, or the exchange rate wouldn't ex would change. The supply and demand of the two currencies would be equal. Now, there's and, and that would work. And frankly, that's what they have been doing for some time now. But there's one kind of catch here. The whole time that they're doing this, what is happening? What is happening? Well, they keep shipping more to the United States than the United States is shipping to China. These guys keep having to print yuan and buy dollars with those yuan in order to keep the Chinese currency cheap. So these people are going to keep accumulating dollars. They just keep printing yuan, and then they just keep accumulating dollars. So let me draw that over here. So the Chinese central bank just starts accumulating many, many dollars. They can, they can print yuan as much as they want. Those yuan go into the, they, they trade them into dollars, and then they start, these guys start accumulating, these guys just start accumulating more and more dollars over here. And the more that they want this trade imbalance to occur, the longer that they want it to occur, the more dollars that they will have to accumulate. So they have to just keep on doing it. They can't even stop doing it. They have to keep doing it in order to keep the trade balance the way it is. In the next video, I'll talk about what they actually have to do with these dollars, because they actually won't just keep it in cash, what they actually have to do with these dollars, and then what effect that actually might have on the United States economy. And then we could talk about how this might unwound unwind itself but we'll find out it's actually very difficult for all of this for the scenario to unwind once it gets started